let's talk about chapter 11, engineering control of hazards. So in the previous chapters, we've discussed all the different hazards that exist in manufacturing. It might sound like there's danger around every corner and something's ready, a forklift is ready to run you over, or a giant vat of chemicals is ready to spill, but it isn't really like this because we have techniques to mitigate all of those hazards that make our workplaces safe. The next few chapters, we're gonna talk about these techniques. Hazard control involves a recognition, evaluation, and elimination or minimization of hazards in the workplace. Industry uses a concept called the hierarchy of hazard control to prioritize the method of combating hazards. The first and most desirable is the application of what are known as engineering controls, and that is the subject of this video. These controls are built into the processes and very importantly, do not require human action to make them work. The second level of control is known as administrative controls. These are the procedures and the documented rules, signs, things that do require human action to make them work. So real quick, an example, if you have a blow dryer and you don't have a GCFI outlet. So an out, what a GCFI does, if you drop your blow dryer in a bathtub, it turns the circuit off before it shocks you, right? That is an engineering control. It doesn't require you to do anything. If you don't have that engineering control, the administrative control is the owner's manual telling you, hey, don't drop this blow dryer in a bathtub. Right? That requires you to not drop it in a bathtub. Well, that's how accidents happen, right? You drop it in a bathtub, if you don't have the circuit breaker installed, you're gonna get shocked, and that owner's manual didn't accomplish anything with that administrative control, okay? 